So next in our discussion of triune autonomic nervous system, I'd like to spend some time talking about the anatomy of it. And study of anatomy gives us tremendous benefit uh, in this whole concept because it brings things into a grounded level. It makes it more uh, tangible for us. So triune autonomic nervous system, first of all, I'd like to make a distinction. You may have heard of the tri triune brain concept. Paul McLean, uh, the idea of reptilian, limbic, and corte cortex, or neocortex. And this is not that. The triune brain concept uh, from the late 60s, early 70s, uh, has many interesting applications. But when we think of triune autonomic nervous system, it is really not about that. And in fact, the triune brain concept is really out of date because it's been discovered that these different brain areas are all quite interactive and interdependent. They're not so cleanly separated as they were first considered to be. So let's start our discussion of anatomy of triune autonomic nervous system with the slide that we used before. And here we see uh, the overview of this whole polyvagal concept. And we have discussed the appearance of parasympathetic, sympathetic, and social branches of the autonomic nervous system as the substrate of all our health and wellness. This is the most important idea in the healing arts, in my opinion. We went through the details of where they came from and how they relate, uh, the phylogeny as the basis of the, uh, of the whole conduct, and we looked in detail at the cross-section of the brain stem where the vagus nerve has multiple nuclei. So now let's just look a little more closely, and our next slide will be the parasympathetic branch of the autonomic nervous system. The parasympathetic is the oldest, it's the most primitive. It is very oriented toward the torso of the body. Um, it's as if the whole body is a, uh, a primitive creature, a machine for metabolic activity, digestion, respiration, and circulation, the essential survival requirements. And then more specifically, for we see here the vagus nerve, the vagus nerve could be said to be the primary uh, embodiment of the parasympathetic concept. In the vagus nerve, the uh, uh, neural regulation of these uh, primitive metabolic functions uh, all are uh, organized. There are other topics to talk about in this area. For example, enteric nervous system, sort of a cousin of the vagus. Um, but we'll leave that aside for now and just imagine when we're thinking of parasympathetic, let's think of the torso as a unit of function innervated by the vagus nerve. There's also the sacral plexus, deserves kind of uh, discussion as well. But torso as a unit of function innervated by the vagus nerve, which exits from the skull in the uh, suture between the occiput and temporal bones. Then we go to our next uh, slide and we see a close-up of the neck. Uh, in particular, we're interested, uh, we've just been discussing the vagus nerve. Uh, we see it right there at the, uh, right below the ear under the sternocleidomastoid muscle. And then that gives us a nice segue into our next branch, the sympathetic nervous system. Now this is the newer, built on top of the old primitive system. The sympathetic nervous system um, is the anatomy of the sympathetic nervous system. It consists of the um, group of nerves adjoining the spine. They're actually uh, attached to the vertebral bodies and connect the spine at the thoracic and lumbar segments. Of particular interest is the points at the top, superior cervical ganglion, and at the bottom, 
the gangland of Empar. And these are, have been uh, uh, acknowledged and recognized by especially Randolph Stone that the north and south pole of the sympathetic nervous system is a way to um, engage and uh, affect sympathetic um, anatomy. And he devised very effective techniques for doing that. Then we could move on to our third branch. This is the social nervous system. And as we've discussed, it's the uh, neurology for operating all the expressive qualities of the face and throat area. These are the nerves that uh, accomplish bonding, uh, language, social engagement, affect, how we uh, move our face when we're in communication with another person. And we see that uh, they're present at a very early age and we can view them as a group. That would be the social nervous system, the social autonomic nervous system anatomy. And we could uh, take a moment with the social to just acknowledge that the corticobulbar tract is the uh, neurological uh, unification of these different nerves in the face. For instance, facial, trigeminal, glossopharyngeal. Each nerve has a particular function, but here we're stepping back and seeing it all as one unit of function. And behind the curtain, deep in the brain, uh, arising in the cortex, and uh, like a piece of dental floss connecting the dots of the nuclei of these cranial nerves, the corticobulbar tract would be the physicalization of the social nervous system. So we complete with a large picture view of the whole thing. And here, once again, reviewing. But here in the composite, observe in the drawing, we have the red anatomy. That's the parasympathetic. We see uh, the sacral plexus at the bottom ganglia in the middle, operating heart, lungs, digestion, reproduction, and all going back up to the brain stem. That's parasympathetic, the red. And then we see the yellow along the spine, that's the sympathetic anatomy. And here the branches are drawn, drawn into little forks projecting anteriorly, and that means that they go from there out all into all the same territory as parasympathetic. The organs and the viscera are operated uh, in tandem by the two systems. So uh, using this drawing, observe the yellow, but then project it out into the rest of the body. And then we see at the top the light blue here. That represents the anatomy of the social nervous system. Cranial nerves, five, seven, nine, 10, and 11, plus some associated other nerves. So that's the anatomy of the triune autonomic nervous system. This gives us a real basis. Uh, this could be approached through biofeedback, through palpation, through other methods to really, I believe the day will come when monitoring what is happening in the triune autonomic nervous system through its anatomical expression can easily be done with biofeedback and other means. I believe that will increasingly be recognized as a way to uh, really monitor how uh, clients are doing in a host of different conditions.